This guy is in his mid-30s at this point, and he has denser hair than he did in his uh, mid-20s. What's up guys, Derek more police more So we're gonna be talking about the big three and what you can expect after 10 years. Are you gonna hold on to all your ground? Are you going to gain background? Does this stuff wear off? Are you gonna start losing your hair after a certain amount of time? There's not a lot of examples online of somebody like recording their progress from like day one all the way to the end of, well, I don't know, just like a decade later, to be honest. No one really who has hair loss prevention really comes back to update and um, give uh, you know protocol details or kind of outline how long something stayed uh, useful for or if it stopped working effectively or whatever. Um, there's not a lot of good logs online. Like on YouTube, there's very few um, YouTubers talking about this stuff and online, I guess you kind of have to dig a bit. And typically I'll get sent this kind of stuff by people who want to, uh, they just find it interesting or they think it's, you know, a good story to share or whatever. And I'll often get DMs about this stuff. And this is a good one that I was sent um, a while ago. I've been saving it. Um, it's been on my to-do list and it is a 27 year old who started, um, who was on finasteride, Rogaine twice a day and Nizoril. So if you don't know, finasteride, minoxidil, and ketoconazole shampoo is more or less considered the big three stack in terms of FDA approved like newbie protocol. Like it's basically the first go-to thing that mostly everyone does and it works very, very well for the majority of people and most people tolerate it well as well and get like pretty significant results for a decent amount of time. So this guy is on the classic stack that uh, a lot of people go to. Some people will start with uh, just the ketoconazole and then add finasteride and then minoxidil later, which is typically the progression I would recommend is starting with a keto shampoo and then finasteride and then minoxidil if it were me rather than deploying like the only time the kitchen sink of like the whole thing makes sense all at once is typically if you knew already that you somehow we're gonna be fine tolerating the side effects or just didn't care, or depending on how aggressive your loss is. Like if you're being proactive, you might be able to get away with less. It doesn't necessarily mean you need to use the big three. This is just the most effective stack that is like newbie friendly and is like cheap and over the counter and has been assessed by the FDA. You need to prevent DHT from miniaturizing hair follicles should be the first thing you do is addressing the androgen component whether you do that through ketoconazole and finasteride through 5-alpha reductase inhibition or whether you do it with a topical anti-androgen like cbo301 or ru58841 or anything of that nature that should be the first thing you do before you start to deploy the growth stimulants anybody who uses a growth stimulant on its own like minoxidil and just leaves the other stuff maybe you might cosmetically offset the visual loss but you're still going to be losing your hair sure like assuredly you're going to still be losing your hair you just might not see it until you've lost so much ground that it's basically <laughs> progressed past the point that the artificial stimulus you've grown is now no longer it's like a net negative with what you've continued to lose because you're not actually stopping androgens from doing anything when you're on minoxidil so basically this is the newbie go-to you have the finasteride the minoxidil and the nizoral so this is his before image before he starts in uh 2011 so as you can see some pretty Significant diffuse thinning. He is uh, well on his way to balding, unfortunately. So moving forward to six years later, he shows an update and it is a dry hair update. So it's not super, uh, it's not ideal to compare to the previous images. However, you can see that he's not, you know, far gone. He is uh, still maintaining all but not an ideal hairline. It's uh, definitely not, probably not worse than it was six years back. So the fact that he's maintained seemingly ground for a while um, for this long is uh, obviously promising. And then above and beyond that, and side effect free, of course. Above and beyond that, we see in 2020, he gives a wet hair update so we can actually see how diffuse his hair is even when it's soaked compared to his original before image. So here you can see it and it actually looks like it's improved despite it being, this is actually 2020. So this is nine years later and he has improved density than what he had in 2011. So that's very promising for this protocol being that it's a very newbie, rudimentary, well-tolerated approach that's actually very cheap, cost-effective and uh, um, FDA approved and um, pretty much everything that, uh, you know, the you would want to get out of a protocol like this, frankly, like trying to regrow back to baseline of never losing hair is kind of like a 
tall task to ask of a like really straight edge like you know protocol that's not like something nuclear or something crazy or some research chemical or something so this is you know very impressive he's maintained clearly as well as improved a significant amount and he's maintained it nine years later so this guy is in his mid 30s at this point and he has denser hair than he did in his uh mid 20s even with wet hair you can see it significantly better and he posted a 10-year update and he says even a windy day is fine now happy face and you can see the wind blowing in his hair you can still see again not ideal hair but you have to keep in mind before he started he didn't have ideal hair either so it sort of reinforces the notion that you have to get ahead of this shit too like being proactive about it is what's going to prevent you from getting to a point where you have to like maintain and just deal with maintaining potentially what you may otherwise not be satisfied with so if you want to maintain like actual good density and a good hairline you have to get in front of it rather than wait until it happens and then play catch up so this is a 10-year update with dry hair but you already saw the wet hair update and then here is another picture 10 years in the making only the big three so this guy again reinforcing the efficacy of the big three and um he's very happy clearly because um if you're in your mid-20s and somebody told you you could regain a bit of density and uh, maintain it until your mid-30s without having to get a hair transplant or do any crazy experimental treatments or use any uh you know anti-androgens or things of this nature that you may otherwise not be comfortable with you could get it you could get away with like a fairly you know common treatment that most people are probably going to be okay with most people would be pretty happy with that to be honest and uh, it's good to see that this is possible to be honest because it's like there are very few things available over the counter and the fact that there is something that is cheap readily available well tolerated by you know 98 percent of people or whatever it is um that's a good sign honestly and it's sort of uh to me bringing this to light not only is to just show you that it is possible to maintain your hair with like a reasonable protocol like nothing insane it doesn't have to be overly complicated with something that's like relatively cheap but above and beyond that this guy was like well on his way to being bald and he managed to stave it off recover a decent amount of ground and hold it for a decade so that really really strongly reinforces that you may otherwise be able to maintain like a perfect head of hair if you just get in front of it from the get-go and even if you've started to you know get far gone a bit you can you can recover a decent amount of ground and depending how aggressive you want to get with it like for example just this guy incorporating microneedling into his protocol could have probably you know 1.5 to 2x his density increase with the mono with the minoxidil that's like a you know a very obvious addition that he could have done but you know this is even just like the big three that is like the super newbie approach so honestly really promising that these uh logs are even out there and that you can see it, like a definitive before and after of this guy who was like clearly prone to male pattern baldness like by a significant amount too this is like not somebody who like most guys are not going to be this far gone by their mid-20s like he was well on his way so this guy had pretty aggressive loss so again it's promising that a guy with aggressive loss was able to maintain for that long with a reasonably like normal protocol without anything fucking crazy so take from that what you will thank you guys for watching please like subscribe check out my blog moreplay28.com if you want to see more uh um deep dives into hair loss pharmacology some of the uh you know the common treatments as well as some of the obscure ones and some of the stuff i even experiment on myself subscribe subscribe to the newsletter you're not going to get sent the articles that i write if you don't subscribe to that it's the first link in the description below and it is uh more palatable than my videos because it has a table of contents with sub, uh concise subsections and uh, hyperlinks to all of the clinical studies i reference for you to delve into further for your own personal research if you wish uh, if you want to check out my uh anything pharma grade hair loss related that i use myself um, you can check that out from the compounding pharmacies that I uh, use myself for some of the specialty medications, um, as well as my TRT clinic and uh, Gorilla Mind, Gorilla Mode, anything else I'm associated with. It's all in the video description below. Um, again, like, comment, helps the algorithm. It's much appreciated when you guys do that. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.